So this is how Stephen King wrote so many books that he had to make up a fake person just to publish them all. Hey, professional internet rap man, Professor Jelly here. You ever notice that most writers seem to struggle to write? It is a genuinely difficult thing to motivate yourself to write on a novel day in, day out. But then you got these sickos like Stephen King who actually seem to like writing, like, like they enjoy their job makes me sick. King has written hundreds of stories over the years, but if you look through his bibliography, you'll notice this other name that keeps popping up, Richard Bachman. Who is this Richard fellow? And what does he have to do with severe drug abuse? Well, I understand we have to go back to the 70s. Stephen King was the hot new horror writer on the scene. He was like, you know what's scary? Society. And people were like, write this man a check. It's also important to note that during this period, Stephen King was off his nut on coke. He would spend hours furiously pounding away at his keyboard with cotton balls stuck up his nose to stop the nosebleeds. There's also a substantial amount of his fan base that just swears that Stephen's just not as good anymore now that he got sober. <laughs> I don't care if the drugs were ruining your life. I want another carry. So on top of this, King had all these other countless stories that he had written before Carry was published. So he was ready to put out like 40,000 books a minute. This is where the problem starts. If you know anything about the publishing industry, you know that it's full of these countless useless requirements that these publishers think that you have to have to sell a book. Like if your book isn't X amount long, or if you don't have enough sauerkraut references, you're just doomed to fail. Like, get out of the game, kid. One of these rules was that the general public could not handle any more than one book a year by a single author. Any more, and their collective pea brains would just explode from overstimulation. Thus, problem for Stephen King. So Stephen was sitting in his agent's office one day, and he was like, hmm, if only I could publish books under two names. And then he saw a book by Richard Stark on the counter and Bachman Turner Overdrive was playing on the radio and he was like, Stephen is thinking. <laughs> that's, that's not a joke. That's literally what happened. It's on his website. <laughs> With his new secret identity, Stephen began putting out books left and right under the Richard Bachman pen name. Now the Bachman books are usually regarded pretty highly. They're considered pretty good work, but there's one that stands out, Rage. Now you probably already know this if you're a King super fan, but for those who don't know, Rage has this reputation for two reasons. Number one, and most notably, is Rage's subject matter. Rage is about a kid who comes to school, shoots his teacher, and holds his class hostage. There are obviously some things people would find controversial with that. Reason number two, something that is not talked about near as much, Rage does not seem to be a very good book. It seems to go over the same subject matter as Carrie, you know, teenagers equal bad plus related themes, but just not as well, which is not that surprising when you consider that it was King's first novel. Rage's infamy grew until after it was involved in a few real life shooting events, King personally pulled the book from print. All the other Bachman books are still around, usually promoted as Stephen King writing as Richard Bachman. While Rage is one of, if not his most controversial book, Rage is not the reason why Stephen King stopped writing as Richard Bachman. The real reason is not actually that exciting. <laughs> it was just some bookstore clerk who was like, this Richard Bachman guy writes a lot like Stephen King. And then he went down to the Library of Congress and was like, Oh, it's because he is Stephen King. What I think is much more interesting is that after Stephen got exposed, he just rolled with it. He put out a publicity statement saying that Richard had died of cancer of the pseudonym, and every couple years he finds a new Bachman book up in the attic. <laughs> That's just funny. There's also a persistent rumor that James Patterson is also just another Stephen King pen name. But I don't think I can live in that world. After the truth came out about Richard Bachman, Stephen was given more freedom from his publishing company. And the Bachman books received a huge sales boost. In fact, the only loss that came out of this debacle was the experiment that Stephen was running. See, in addition to giving him the ability to publish more than one book a year, Stephen also wanted to use the Richard Bachman pen name to see if his success had been the result of luck or genuine writing ability. 
However, due to it ending so soon, King has said that he wasn't actually able to get a definitive answer. But he did get one great quote out of it after a critic said that Richard Bachman writes the way that Stephen King would write if Stephen King could write. Today, Richard Bachman lives on as an interesting character in Stephen King's history. But with King saying that there may be a few more Bachman books left to be found, we may still have more to hear from the greatest writer that never was. This has been Professor Jelly. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Thank you.